In today's episode of Project 86, the young boy installs an intake to make negligible gains in his old overpriced econo box that has been glorified into a drift icon. Follow us for the journey as we delve deeper into this money pit of a project. As he sits in his car sweating his balls off in the winter heat of California. Because winter in California... Jesus Christ, the camera actually overheated. <laughs> If you guys have been following my build so far, you know that every part that I've chosen to put on this build has had a purpose of some sort, whether it be increasing performance, efficiency, or even just driver feel like the Nardi wheel I have in front of me right now. Um, everything has fit into this puzzle of, of this mental image I have of this car when it's complete. And today's part is actually, it does none of those things. <laughs> Why have I chosen to install it? I'll tell you guys more about that in a bit. But the part I'm talking about today is an intake. Most people, when they get a new car, the first thing they think of doing is installing an intake, exhaust, maybe even a tune. But when it comes to naturally aspirated vehicles, most of the time, the intake that comes on the car from the factory is actually extremely efficient. So you're not gonna really see many gains out of it. There may be a small power boost, there may be increased throttle response as well, um, some nice whooshy noises, but outside of that, an intake usually doesn't do much. All of those gains are usually negligible and the, the price to performance ratio, as I like to call it, isn't really there. I usually make the same argument for exhaust systems, but in my car's case, it was a little different because it was rusted to hell and leaking. So I'll make a pass for that one and it does make cool noises so I, I i see the appeal don't don't get me wrong but today's intake install is actually going to allow me to better access things in the engine bay such as a dipstick i actually can't access the dipstick with the factory intake tube thing in the way um, it is a minor inconvenience there are just two small bolts i believe they're 10 millimeter bolts really simple to remove but i wanted something that cleaned up the engine bay in terms of visual appearance i guess that's a vanity thing but also allows me to check the oil at will i don't have to remove any bolts or move anything out of the way added benefit also is that my new engine has this cool plate in the front uh, that says Blue Moon performance shop that built my engine. They're actually very well known So I wanted that to be on display as well It's also carb legal which means when I go in for an inspection in California They're not gonna hassle me about it It's gonna have that cool carb number on there and they're gonna be like Nice part follow me along for this build ladies and gentlemen. Alrighty, so let's check out what this kit actually comes with Ooh, Stickers We've got um, Cannon sticker and some instructions. I'm gonna need these instructions for sure because I don't know what I'm doing. Next up, we've got the adapter plate from Canon. Nice, solid, feels like steel. Um, all the hardware and things we're gonna need. A lot of paper. And the intake itself. So this is the part that's gonna be actually exposed outside. Nice, you can see there's a lot of surface area, which is definitely going to increase airflow. But let me show you guys the engine bay right now and see what I'm talking about when it comes to actually accessing the dipstick and maybe opening up some of the engine bay. So with the 8.6, you got this intake tube right here that's blocking the front of the engine where that cool plate is that I want to show off. The dipstick is actually under right here, which you can't access unless you remove this guy. Now it is only two bolts, not a big deal, but um, if I'm gonna be making this car how I want, I'm gonna make it as accessible as possible, especially with the new engine and I'm checking the oil all the time to make sure that it's up to the right level and it's clean and everything. So yeah, this guy's gonna be cleared out of here. This is gonna be removed. You'll see the front of the engine really nicely and that new intake, if it has any gains of any sort, that's just gonna be a plus. Okay, so first things first, we have to get the old intake system out of the car. With the intake and airbox out of the car, the next step is to remove these four nuts that hold the mass air sensor to the top of the airbox.
The studs that are on the mass air sensor actually need to be removed for the new intake. So a trick that I use is I thread two nuts onto each other. While holding the bottom one, you tighten the top nut. That's what she said. <laughs> And once that's secure, all you need to do is spin the bottom nut counterclockwise and that'll remove the entire stud. I think it's a really cool trick and as long as you can thread two nuts onto it, you don't need to buy one of those special stud extractor tools or anything like that. So the next step with this install is to take their little adapter bracket that they include with the kit and to put it onto the mass airflow sensor after you've got um, the studs removed. We're gonna be reusing the stock gasket as they instruct. Mine is actually in great condition, so I don't see that as being a problem. Um, but so far, so good. I mean, this is probably the easiest install I've done on the car. Uh, knock on wood <laughs> before the car catches on fire and everything burns to a crisp. As per the instructions, I've added some thread locker to these Allen bolts, and the reason why they suggest this is because you're not supposed to over torque these. So I've tightened them just enough, and the thread locker will ensure that the bolts don't move out of place and get sucked into the engine in the future. And of course, they don't include the thread locking compound in the kit itself, so as always, I'll have links to all the tools and parts that I've used in the description box below, including the red Loctite that I used for this. With the adapter in place, the next step is to attach the two stabilizing brackets that hold the intake to the chassis. Um, I'm going to finger tighten these for now, and then once I get everything positioned in the car, I'll tighten them down and make sure it's all secure. Okay, from what I can tell here, the bracket is supposed to attach here. This one's unused, makes total sense. This one, however, there's a little hole right here, doesn't seem to align properly. I'm not sure how I can get this guy to work. Hmm. This bracket right here is the issue. I can twist the entire body just barely, but the angle's off too. I guess it's just one of those old car things. New parts tend to not line up perfectly. Well, I'm doing something wrong, which is probably the case. <laughs> wow, they really got these measurements down like to the last bit, like just barely fits. The angles are still a bit off with the bracket, but when I tighten it down, it should be stable and work. Now I'm gonna actually fit this guy on there and see if we can get it to fit in that tiny little place right there. Ooh. Ah. So here's how it's looking. I've tightened up most of the things. I just have to tighten the little hose right there. But other than that, all of this stuff is secured. It's not going anywhere. Brackets just barely line up. I made sure that this charge filter um, was not touching anywhere on the chassis. It's a very tight fit, but it's not actually touching. Um, neither on the sides nor at the bottom. Right there, there's a ton of clearance. I could actually fit my hand underneath. So, very tight fit. We'll see how it does in terms of sound and performance and things like that. But my main goal, like I said earlier, now I have easy access to this dipstick right here. Don't have to remove anything. I am going to remove this little bracket here, which is going to be uh, basically vestigial at this point. Um, also, look at that. Don't mind how dirty everything is. We've had a ton of coolant leaks and sprays, and on top of that, the weather has been super windy, so it's all dusty all over. I will eventually get some type of under panel that'll protect the underside of the engine from uh, dust and debris from shooting up, which will keep the engine bay cleaner overall. Plus, it'll help with some of the arrow. Um, this part is all open, so yeah, there's a ton of turbulence that builds up here when you're driving. Not like the car is super aerodynamic as is, but every little bit helps. 
Now, I'm going to tighten up this hose and then we'll get some sound clips for you guys. So, we'll see if there's any improvement in the whoosh department. I almost forgot this really important guy. So, this is the Carb ID sticker. I'm probably going to put it right here. Just so when I do get a smog inspection, they're not going to be like, What is that? That's a modification. So, it'll be right on there. It's also not going to affect. Uh, I would put it on the chassis somewhere, but when the car gets painted uh, some of these bars and supports and things like that are also going to get painted as well and i don't want them just having to remove this so yeah this seems like the most logical spot and there she is function and legality This video was brought to you by Drift Merch, a motorsport pop culture and Japan inspired streetwear brand where all the designs are made by yours truly. We've got everything from soft and stylish shirts to ultra durable decals, mugs for your morning brew, and clocks to know when you're running late. So check us out at driftmerch.com or by clicking on the link in the description below. All proceeds go towards making more videos for you guys and fixing up all the projects that we have going on. So thank you guys for all the support. Now let's get back to the video. definitely has more throaty of a sound. You can also hear the It's pulling in air from this, obviously. It's an intake, not an outtake. <laughs> I've always wanted ITVs, but living in California, it's not legal. So I guess this is the next best thing. Plus one for me for the whooshy noises. So the next step is for me to take the car out for a spin and make sure that it's driving normally, that we've got normal throttle response and that there aren't any air leaks or anything like that. So I think that's about it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you loved it, consider subscribing. Click that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel. Let's YouTube and that all elusive algorithm know that I'm putting out content that you guys are enjoying. And hopefully that's the case. If I'm, if I'm not, please let me know in the comments. And uh, if I am, please let me know in the comments anyway. <laughs> so take care, stay safe, drive safe, be happy, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!